Primary skin lesions are lesions that develop on previously unaffected skin. Primary skin lesions are classified into various categories, each with its own set of features. Let's look at some of the more frequent kinds. A macula is a confined, flat patch of skin color change that's smaller than one centimeter in diameter. Freckles, petechia, measles, flat moles, and scarlet fever are all instances of macules. A patch is a flat, non-palpable, irregular-shaped macule with a diameter more than one centimeter. Vitiligo, port wine stains, Mongolian spots, and cafe au lait spots are some types of patches. A papule is a raised, hard, confined region with a diameter of less than one centimeter. Warts, raised moles, lipomas, basal cell carcinomas, and lichen planus are all instances of papules. A nodule is an elevated, firm, circumscribed lesion that is deeper in the dermis than a papule, and it's one to two centimeters in diameter. Some examples of nodules include erythema nodosum and lipomas. A vesicle is an elevated, confined, superficial collection of serous fluid with a diameter of less than one centimeter. Chicken pox, shingles, and second degree burns are all instances of vesicles. Ebola is a vesicle greater than one centimeter in diameter that is also known as a blister. One example of Ebola is Pemphigus vulgaris. A plaque is a circumscribed, elevated, superficial, solid lesion that is larger than 0.5 centimeters in diameter. Some examples of plaques include psoriasis, seborrheic keratoses, and actinic keratoses. A wheel is a firm, elevated, solid, transient, edematous, irregularly shaped area that can vary in diameter. Some examples of wheels include insect bites, urticaria, and allergic reactions. A tumor is an elevated solid lesion that may be clearly demarcated and is deeper into the dermis. It's more than two centimeters in diameter. Some examples of tumors include neoplasms, benign tumors, lipomas, and hemangiomas. A pustule is an elevated superficial lesion filled with purulent fluid. Some examples of pustules include acne and impetigo. A cyst is an elevated circumscribed encapsulated lesion that's in the dermis or subcutaneous layer and is filled with liquid or semi-solid material. Some examples of cysts include sebaceous cysts and cystic acne. Telangiectasia are fine, around 0.5 to 1 millimeter, irregular red lines produced by capillary dilation. They can be associated with acne rosacea, lupus, venous hypertension, or developmental abnormalities such as port wine birthmarks. In some cases, it may cause discomfort or itching, but in most cases, it's a cosmetic concern only. If you're finding value in this video, then please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And check out the link in the description to purchase an instant digital download of the Integumentary System and Disorders Nursing Notes. Secondary skin lesions are changes to the skin that occur over time or as a result of factors such as scratching or infection. They can have a variety of causes and can range from mild to severe. Here are some of the most common secondary skin lesions. A fissure is a linear crack or break in the skin from the epidermis to the dermis. Fissures can be dry or moist and are commonly found in areas such as athlete's foot or cracks at the corners of the mouth. Scale refers to the excess dead epidermal cells that are produced by abnormal keratinization and shedding. The scales can be flaky, irregular, thick or thin, dry or oily, and vary in size. Examples of scale include post drug reaction or sunburn skin flaking, or flaking of the skin with seborrheic dermatitis following scarlet fever. Lichenification is a condition in which the skin becomes rough and thickened as a result of persistent rubbing, pruritus, or skin irritation. This often occurs on the flexor surface of extremities and is a common symptom of chronic dermatitis. A scar is usually a thin to thick fibrous tissue that replaces normal skin following injury or laceration to the dermis. Examples of scars include surgical incisions and healed wounds. A keloid is an irregular shaped, sharply elevated, progressively enlarging scar that grows beyond the boundaries of the wound. This is caused by excessive collagen formation during the healing process. 
Keloids are unlike hypertrophic scars, which do not extend beyond the border of the injury. Keloid formation can occur following surgery. An excoriation is an area of skin in which there is a loss of epidermis, exposing the dermis. This results in a linear, hollowed out, crusted area. Excoriation is typically self-induced due to scratching. Examples include abrasions, scratches, and scabies. An ulcer is a loss of the epidermis, extending into the dermis, that has a crater-like, irregular shape. Examples of ulcers include pressure ulcers, chancres, and stasis ulcers. An erosion is a loss of part of the epidermis and appears as a depressed, moist, glistening area. This follows the rupture of a vesicle or bulla. An example of erosion is varicella or variola after rupture. Atrophy is a depression in the skin resulting from thinning of the epidermis or dermis. This results in the thinning of the skin surface and loss of skin markings, and the skin appears translucent and paper-like. Examples of atrophy include aged skin and striae, which are stretch marks. Thank you for watching. 